Hello, welcome to the Mark Janard Show, the cybersecurity show. Police, they hate this software because they can't really track with it. I'm going to break it down in this video, all right? But before I do that, take a moment to hit that subscribe button and the like button. I appreciate you. So police typically track, you know, the phones of users using several techniques and legal methods, right? They can use like a cell, you know, tower data. You know, police can work with mobile carriers to access records showing which cell towers a phone has connected to and when. This allows them to estimate the phone's location over time, which is a process known as obtaining cell site location information, also known as CSLI. For real-time tracking, they can have their carrier ping the phone to get its current location. They can also use GPS data. Some invest, you know, investigations use GPS data stored on the phone or transmitted to apps and cloud services. This can reveal precise movements, if available, to law enforcement, either from the device itself or from third-party data brokers. They use forensic extraction tools. Police often, you know, they basically often use mobile device forensic tools, also known as MDFTs, such as Celebrite, to extract all data from a seized phone, including the location history, the texts, the emails, the photos, and app data. These tools can sometimes bypass passwords and security features, giving access to both stored and deleted information. Now, before I get into, you know, graphene OS, right? I'm, I want to just outline and give you an overview of what the police use so that you can see how good graphene OS, because the police, they have so much at their disposal. They use tools like Stingray, which is a type of cell site simulator or IMSI catcher used by law enforcement and intelligence agencies to track and locate mobile phones as well as collect identifying information and in some cases intercept communications, right? Now, here is typically how it works. There's the you know, there's the device setup which is, and deployment, right? The Stingray device is usually installed in a vehicle or carried in a portable case, allowing operators to move it into the target area. It is basically powered on and configured to emulate a legitimate cellular base station. That's the cell tower. There's the forcing connections, which is the active mode. The Stingray broadcasts a signal that appears stronger than the, you know, basically those from real nearby cell towers. All mobile phones in the basically in the vicinity, regardless of whether they're making calls or using data, will attempt to connect to the Stingray, believing it to be the best available tower. There's device identification and data extraction, right? That's after that step. So as phones connect, the Stingray collects device identifiers, such as the IMSI, that's the International Mobile Subscriber Identity, and the ESN, which is the Electronic Serial Number, or MIN, that's the Mobile identifi Identification Number. So if the target device's IMSI is known, the operator can filter for that specific device. Otherwise, all identifiers in the area are collected for later analysis. Then they do loca uh, location and tracking. So once the target device is identified, the Stingray measures the signal strength between itself and the phone. Operators move the Stingray to different locations, repeating the signal measurement process. So by triangulating signal strengths from multiple positions, the system can accurately pinpoint the phone's location, even if it is not actively being used for calls or data. The next step after that in Stingray is the advanced capabilities. So some Stingray models can intercept call and text content, perform denial of service, blocking calls or data, or force devices to downgrade to less secure protocols like 2G for easier interception. They can also force devices to increase their transmission power or generate more frequent transmissions, making tracking easier. There's the passive mode, which is optional. In passive mode, the Stingray only listens to signals from phones and towers without you know, actively forcing connections, allowing it to gather information more covertly, but with less control over which devices connect. Then you have the data uh, you know, analysis and follow-up. The collected data is analyzed, and if necessary, law enforcement can use the IMSI or other identifiers to request subscriber information from mobile carriers. So the process can be repeated or refined to track the device as it moves, okay? Now, in regards to detection and countermeasures, you know, tools like, you know, Ray Hunter, which is developed by the EFF, can help detect the presence of Stingray devices by monitoring for, you know, anomalies such as forced 2G downgrades, unusual IMSI requests, or abnormal signal, you know, signal patterns, right? However, there are legal and pri privacy considerations for the police to use, especially 
when using Stingray, right? It raises significant privacy and legal concerns as, you know, sometimes they indiscriminately collect data from all phones in the area, not just the target, you know, data brokers and mass surveillance tools like, you know, police may purchase location data from commercial brokers who collect it from popular apps using the advertising IDs. Tools like Fog Reveal like Aggregate and analyze, you know, this data to map movements and build patterns of life for individuals, sometimes without a warrant. Then they have tower dumps. Police can request a tower dump from a carrier, which provides a list of all devices that connected uh, to a specific cell tower during a certain period. So this can help identify suspects or witnesses who were in a, you know, particular area at the specific time. Now let's talk about Graphene OS. It's basically a privacy and security focused mobile operating system based on the Android open source project, AOSP. It is designed to provide users with enhanced protection against surveillance, hacking and data extraction by implementing a range of security hardening measures and removing default Google services and apps. Now here's what makes Graphene <laughs> hateful from the police officers. There's no default Google services, right? By default, Graphene, Graphene OS does not include Google apps or services which are commonly used for device tracking and data collection. This means that collection data and other you know, telemetry typically accessible to law enforcement through Google are not automatic, they're not available. Then there's the hardening security. So the OS employs advanced security features such as improved sandboxing, exploit mitigations, and a more restrictive permission model. So this basically this makes it more difficult for adversaries, including police, for you know using forensic tools or hacking techniques to access data or bypass device encryption. There's granular app control, so users have more control over app permissions, including the ability to restrict access to sensors, storage, or you know, network connections. So this limits the ability of both apps and system services to collect or transmit identifying information. You have randomized identifiers, so features like randomized MAC addresses and secure Wi-Fi handling reduce the risk of device fingerprinting and tracking on networks. There's the encrypted communication, so Graphene OS supports the use of encrypted messaging apps and secure communication protocols, making interception and monitoring of these messages significantly more difficult. Now, there's the open source and regular updates nature of Graphene OS too. The open source nature of Graphene OS allows for community scrutiny and rapid patching of vulnerabilities, further reducing the attack surface for law enforcement or malicious actors. Graphene OS officially supports basically only Google Pixel devices due to its specific security and hardware requirements. As of July 2025, the following devices have official production support for Graphene OS. You have the Pixel 9a, Pixel 9 Pro Fold, the Pixel 9 Pro XL, Pixel 9 Pro, Pixel 9, Pixel 8a, Pixel 8 Pro, Pixel 8, Pixel Fold, Pixel Tablet, Pixel 7a, Pixel 7 Pro, Pixel 7, Pixel 6a, Pixel 6 Pro, Pixel 6. Now, earlier Pixel models, such as the Pixel 5a, 5, 4a, and 4, have reached end-of-life status and are only supported with extended support versions, meaning they no longer receive full security updates from the Graphene OS team. So that's what I have for you today. Please take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and the like button if you appreciate this video and you want more videos like this, please let me know that by hitting that subscribe button and the like button right now. I appreciate your viewership. Stay safe. See you in the next video.